yeah Kay I love I really love that post that you put up the other day about um that Paul oh, Jacob Tom. about the three minds the higher conscious the subconscious and the conscious mind and their interplay in mediumship and um um I, I just feel like that's really helped me to kind of understand because I do feel like you know at times my conscious mind hijacks the process yeah um I was just right. I don't have a question as such, but I was just wondering if you have any further kind of insights or your take on on that explanation. And um, I found an interview with him where he, he explained it a little further. Does he explain it better? Because the way he's yeah, got it yeah. written, it's, it's very confusing. Wordy. Yeah. So what he said was um was the higher consciousness. And I mean, I love the mechanics of the energy. What happens with the energy, and this is why it intrigues me. And I also yeah. get confused when you know my mind tries to take over so what he explained is that the higher consciousness resides at the soul so he physically put it down there in the solar plexus yeah and then the, the information comes um and he explained that clairsentience is the um how you get the information yes first. then yes. it rises the sub it rises up and it creates that image yeah, well, yeah this in the yes. subconscious mind which is back here and then it comes through it comes to up. the conscious mind mm -hmm. where we do the interpretation and delivering of the information yes so and, that, and, yeah, and it's it's that when it comes through the clairsentience the way i understand it is the image is there to help us to understand what we're feeling yeah. so yeah. we have to use it's it's be always it's best to use them simultaneously. So you're mm -hmm. using the class sentience that bubbles up, comes up, and creates an image to help you understand what you're feeling, right? Yeah. yeah. So the thing about it is, is we'll have images. Here's where the breakdown is: is as mediums, we'll get that image, and we'll neglect the class sentience of what we're feeling. We'll yeah. neglect that aspect of it and only just say, this is what I'm seeing. Mm. Well, yeah. we can say what we're seeing and sometimes that works, but many times that won't work because it's not literal of what it is that image is. So yeah. you have to go back in, you have to rely on that clairsentience because it's that clairsentience is what gives you really the meat of what is that what's behind the image yeah 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 so that's the what, image is what, there to help you get there it's to help you right. get to, from point from point a to point b the image is there to help you get get to that place so you have to really use that clairsentience so how it was explained to me when when i very in the very early first year of my training maybe maybe second year first ish year um all you know i was very very clairvoyant and i just saw movies rolling in my head when i worked mm -hmm. and i was able to relay what i was seeing and tell a story that way and that was wonderful however one day it when I was forced at a workshop to use clairsentience, which I've never, never even heard of it up until that day it was the first time I'd ever even, actually it was the first day I ever really even knew that there were clairs. <laughs> that was my intro. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I saw movies in my head. I didn't know that that was clairvoyance. That's, that's where I was at in my development. So, I was told we were we were banned from using the image and we had to use the Claire sentience, which was a nightmare and um, a horrible day for me. I bombed all day long. <laughs> I just I couldn't. It was hard. <laughs> it was really hard. But from that day forward, my images all went away. Wow. And the only other thing I knew then was my brand new learning of clairsentience. <laughs> so for about a year, I didn't have any images and all I did was learn my clairsentience. By this time, I was um, mentoring 
in mentor in a mentorship and I asked my mentor I said why why is why why did that happen why did my images go away and now all I do is feel stuff and she explained to me she says she says they're wanting you to learn your clairsentience they want you to learn how to use it but a day is going to come where you're going to be able to allow that clairsentience to, to match up with the image and you're going to marry those two together and it'll just happen simultaneously. You'll be using both at the same time. And that's exactly what happened. And so that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Do you, do you agree, Tony? Yeah, Is that absolutely. what he was trying to explain? Yeah, I think so. And, and for yeah. the helpful part for me was, well, to separate it out, but also to understand how, um, I think he went on to say, you know, when you're first learning mediumship, the conscious mind, you know, will, will try and hijack the process because you're grappling yes. to understand. Yes. Um, and so being able to kind of separate that out and know its place, um, because I think for, for me, in my development, I'm, my clairsentience is definitely the strongest. And, but I'm starting to, you know, I'm getting images but it's, I don't know what they mean. They're so random, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's where the, you know, the process gets hindered because my mind just kind of goes, what? Um, and, yeah. and tries to jumps to conclusions that yeah. don't really fit. So being understanding that I need to go back into the clear sentience, which is strong, helps all of the, all of that other minds to do what or not do what they need to not do yeah and <laughs> you know I, I, mean? I like this little part right here where he talks and he says i try to understand the image understand the imagery by not staying in my conscious mind up here where the image is but move back into the soul which is where your clear sentience is so mm that that core being where your light is that's where your clear sentience is but that's also where your spirit and your soul all of that really resides there and all of your clairs reside there so i like how he puts it in that way i move back to my soul mm. and when i receive a no i trust that i have seen what i have seen but I have to accept, I have to presume or be allowed my conscious mind to interfere. So he talks here about Gordon Higginson, who was his mentor, and he was also one of my other mentors. Mentor. Um, when you go into a really deep trance state, that conscious mind moves out of the way. Otherwise, it's not. A deep trance state we all go into a somewhat of a trance when we're working and we step into that power but it's very light channeling very light trance work and so our conscious mind is still very active but when you go into a really deep trance state which takes years and years of practice you step away from that you learn how to to get away from that mm -hmm. So he says, for good communication in mental mediumship, we need that soul to soul blending with the elements within our own soul and the communicator's soul and the power of spirit. So that's part of that blending. So it's um, that's one of the th one of the things I love about Paul is he I, I call him the man of wisdom because. I just learned so much from him mm. um, in his teachings. Deborah, I Thank see you. your hands. <laughs> Thank you. So is it possible, because I don't mean to keep repeating, as you all know, I really don't presently have clairvoyance working for me, and I haven't for the two years I've been developing. <clears throat> I understand what's being said, the um, the evidence is being felt first in your soul where our um, where everything is. <laughs> that's so where the, that's where your power resides. Right. So the visual is chakra. just as an enhancement, so that 
if that is so, then maybe some of us will never develop clairvoyance as experienced by others. Um, I would always strive to work towards that, though, because you want to use as many clairs as you can. And there will be times where your images will play a very important role. So, I mean, even if, you know, I understand, you know, clairsentience is my strong suit now as well, strong Claire. But I think yours, it'll, I think it will all come eventually. I really do. But I see what you're saying because it does, your imagery, but imagine what it can be if you're seeing it and you're feeling it at the same time, how much more powerful you can convey that that story that's being revealed to you, the evidence. If you've got both of them there and you bring in your, the more clairs you bring in, the more powerful it can be in the way that you relay that story. I, I could see it certainly enhancing my confidence, <laughs> but. And, and it can, it, it will enhance your, your, um, your overall delivery of that evidence as well because not only are you going to be able to tell what you're feeling but you're going to be able to to paint the picture of what it is you're seeing if that image works with it right. with what you're feeling okay thank you yeah i'm sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. uh, i can i say something to deborah yes i deborah you gave me a reading and um, there was some uh, clairvoyance in it. All, I wrote it down, all of it, all the evidence. And you gave me some, <laughs> I'm just laughing at you now. <laughs> you gave me some um, uh, visual, maybe it's not clear for you that it's clairvoyance. But for me, there was some in the reading you did to me. Yeah. But yeah. if, I, if I describe physical attributes of a person, I'm feeling that they're tall, that they're heavy. It's not that I'm seeing if that's to which you're referring. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Because uh, when we're teaching, um, as teachers in, in a regular class, you teach, you have to be aware that you have students that are more visual, others that are more... Um, how do you say in English, Aud auditive, uh, auditory. And auditory, and others are more, um, they need to experiment to feel and all that. But of course, you are more talented, maybe in the sensitive way, but it, it's impossible not to have it at all. Yeah, yeah, it's there. It's just hasn't, it's just not coming up at the moment but it's it's we have all the clairs and we have the ability to use all those clairs and if we just open to that eventually they will all come in they may not come in often like sometimes I taste sometimes I smell but that doesn't happen in every reading and it could be that your your clairvoyance begins like that Every now and then you'll see an image come in and that's, that's okay. But just be open to it and see what, see what happens. But it, I know that me personally, some of the best readings I've done have been when multiple clairs are coming in and I'm able to really create a very vivid um, story. You don't think, though, that it's a question then of not blending sufficiently. It's just the personal development aspect. Me, my this is my opinion with you and watching you, <laughs> Deborah. This is so. This is just an, an answer that, from from my observations, watching you work, uh, your clear sentience is is really really good and i feel as if your clairvoyance is on the verge of breaking through that's the feeling that i get 
So I would say just just stay, you know, just be open to it it coming and eventually it will come. Yeah, but I will say too that after a year of no images and I'm I really mean no images for a year. It it was another couple of years of my images coming back before my images I felt like my image okay I'm back <laughs> back to where I was so um it it just all all depends there yeah um Chelsea and then I see your hand Asia I'll come to you in a minute um I'm in your shoes in that I get very strong visual images. Uh, it may have to do with my background, I don't know, but um, a scene pops into my head. There may be one or two people in it. They don't do a whole lot of yakking. Mm -hmm. So it's up to me to describe them, what I'm seeing, and hope that it clicks with whoever the sitter is. I, I rarely hear them say anything. Uh, when they do, it really means something. The, on the two occasions it has happened, it was a definite message to give to the mother of who I was seeing. But that doesn't happen often. And I'm getting darn discouraged. Yeah. It's it so it's like what Paul said, and I I apologize because I know I mumbled up my explanation because I know what he's talking about, but I don't know, really know how to convey that back to you. But go back and read that. It's it's in it's posted in the mediums corner, um, and see what you get from it. But it's it's that last bit that he wrote. That's that to me is the important part. Where of that blending soul to soul, um, so your soul to the spirit communicator soul to to the higher power soul to God, whoever. Um, that's that blending process there, and just that might start to allow that clairsentience that of yours to start opening up, because it's there. Definitely, we all have it. We don't have just one Claire we have all of them and we have the ability to use all of them and it's just a matter of you know allowing it to one wake awaken and, and come forward and then two just exercising it and trying to use it as much as what as we can you know apparently they thought I needed a whole year of nothing but <laughs> So I'm a slow learner, <laughs> but I got really good in that one year. <laughs> and so once, once I started getting really good with the clairsentience and I felt really comfortable with it, that's when the images started to come in. So it could be Tassie that you're in that, that place where, where they're wanting you to get very comfortable with your clairvoyance and then they're going to start sneaking in the other clairs. Cause that's I what I, that's been my experience personally with my own development is spirit will work with me and work with me and work with me in one area until I get very comfortable with it and then they switch it and give me something new to start working on and so that it could be that they've you know they're just waiting but focus on your clairsentience set your intent to use the clairsentience and feel into um, the evidence and hopefully it'll start happening. And that's exactly what I had to do. I had to really, really focus hard to get my close sentience up and running. Um, I have two comments to make, but one is for Deborah. And uh, Deborah, you know, you and I have worked together in breakout rooms and I, you know, I feel I feel that you do have clairvoyance, um, and I think it's to me it's just understanding. It's not always going to come like 
you know, clarity, like HD, you know, sometimes that, that clairvoyance looks like foggy, but you're seeing something and you're able to describe it. And so I think that the spirit communicator, when it comes to you, you feel, but the feeling, and this is, and this is where I think the subconscious mind works. You're feeling what they're wearing or what they look like. And the subconscious mind starts to, to recognize, okay, this face is round. I remember seeing a face that's round or, or I know what a polka dot dress looks like because I feel like they're wearing this. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like it is working, you know, but it's just, it's like, it's not, like I said, it's not going to be watching HDTV. It's just going to be like the two are working together. And so you're, I, I, yeah. I want you to stop saying you don't have clairvoyance because you do, girl. Okay, so just stop that. <laughs> just stop it because you do. We, that some of us have worked yeah. with you enough to know that you do have it. It's just in a different way. You know, it's I think it's what it's differently. It's just working yeah. differently. And see, and, yeah. Sorry, go on. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but it is. It's just working differently, and um, and so it's. And the spirit communicators know that they know that. So they're going to work with you in the way that is going to make sense to the sitter, you know? So I, and I kind of look at the other thing I wanted to mention about the subconscious is here's my experience. It's like, you know, sometimes I'll get Claire Gustin's, you know, um, and or I'll get clear audience and it doesn't always come all the time but when I do get it and especially when I've had experience of Claire Gustin's you know taste or smell I remember giving a reading to this one woman the first time it came and for some reason I just started tasting yeah you know, I started tasting collard greens it's like why am I tasting collard greens and it's because the spirit communicator, you know, I'm at this higher consciousness level and the subconscious is reminding me of what that tastes like or what I remember that taste, this taste that I'm tasting on the, you know, the, the, the uh, first consciousness level, the mind consciousness. So it's like that memory of what this tastes like. And then I'm able to interpret to them what I'm getting that that you know it's like oh I remember it's like I'm tasting this and they're like oh yes she made the best collard greens you know she did you know and so it things like that so I kind of look at it as that's where all three minds are working you know and just as Asia said about you know what we know what she knew as being um, you know, the, the tent and the, and the chief with the headdress. It's like, this is what she knows. And so mm -hmm. it's like that. And then she's able to say it. But then, like you said, Kay, the, the soul starts to tell you, well, this is what it means. Yeah. If you've, you, you know? yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was just looking at the comments, um, and Suzanne's asked, uh, how do we work on expanding the images and the th or, or the symbols? Uh, you know, I, I believe everything is intent. So when you say expand on them, do you mean to, to get to see images? Like in Deborah's case where she feels that images never come, or do you mean take an image and expand on that image to unfold what's the meaning behind it. To unfold the meaning behind it. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly what you guys were talking about. Because yeah. if I have an image, I'm like, okay, but why? <laughs> um, yeah. So and how to, I, I personally struggle with that as on a regular basis, mm -hmm. regardless of mediumship. <laughs> yeah. So it would be a wonderful thing to figure out how to work on, I guess, expanding, processing, understanding. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Um, I'm just uh, st I'm stepping into my power here just to see if somebody wants to come forward. But um, for me, you know, it's hard for me to say how to do it. I set this intent um, that I'm going to blend with images. So it's already ingrained in me that as soon as I get an image, I'm immediately, I'm, I'm already blending. I don't even have to make it happen. Okay. But when there are, there are exercises that you can do to help you to start to expand and stay with that image. So, um, I, I've got, I feel like I have a gentleman here that, that's with me. So I, I'm just like saying, okay, you know what I have to do. <laughs> I said, you're going to have to give me an image here. Um, I've got a gentleman here. So in the, in the the very first thing, I'm just going to give you a play-by-play -play if I can stay in my power and do that. Uh, so I've got this gentleman here with me. And the first thing uh, that I that I knew was I had a man. That was the first thing I knew. I just know that. I just know I got a man here with me. And the next feeling that I had there with this gentleman was I feel that this gentleman um, uh, is a very kind man. So this is my clairsentience, me just blending soul to soul with him. I know that he's a very kind, kind man. And the next thing that I got there was I just split second glimpse of a smile. That's it. That's all I got with him. Split second, gone of a smile. Not even the whole smile. Just a part of a smile that I saw there with him. So when I saw that, that smile there with him, the very next thing I just knew that I had a handsome gentleman here with me. I know that in his, in his, in his, <laughs> he's got a sense of humor as well in his, I'm going to say in his prime, he says, no, all the way. <laughs> so I know he's got this, you know, he's got this playfulness there with him as well. But I know that he would have been a handsome man in life. I know that he would have been um, a very um, kind hearted. Uh, I also playfulness there's a playfulness there with him and I know that he would have um, been a quite intelligent well um, read gentleman there I know all of that I just know it just by feeling I got all of that just from a slight glimpse of that smile okay. I see, and it was I mean just that fast I got all of that right there from the, and I'm, I'm telling you guys, it was this much of the smile. I didn't even see, I didn't see all the way across. So that's what I got from that smile. So I'm just going to continue working with him. Now, Deborah, I'm aware with this gentleman that he was, I, I feel he would have been tall as well. I don't see that, but I feel it. I feel that. I feel that he would have been a, t a tall man. Of course, everybody's tall to me. Um, but I feel he would have been a, a, a tall guy, like six feet-ish. That's the feeling that I get. So let me just work with him because I need him to give me an image here. So um, Okay. Uh, I, I get an image... I'm going to tell you what the image is, and then I'm going to work from the image. So the image that I got is an image of a boat. That's the image. So let me see what, what that image is. I've, okay, as I, as I start working with the image of the boat, of the boat I, I'm going to stretch this out, Suzanne. I'm going to see what else I can get from the boat. Um, the first thing that I, I get is I, I get this sense that the boat 
would have been not in a lake, but more in an ocean. I can taste, I can taste the salt on my lips of, of, of the ocean there. So I get this sense that he, there, he has a memory. I'm not saying it's his boat, but I say there's, there's some kind of a connection with a boat that would be in an ocean. That's the feeling that I get. I do feel with this gentleman, he would have spent a great deal of time uh, on the boat or he would have been, I, I know he would have enjoyed being out on the boat. I also know that uh, I, I'm getting another image now. And the image that I got very quickly was of a nice um, tan. So I, so that that nice tan is telling me that he would have um, spent a great deal of time. And it's, it's, it's a weathered tan. So the skin looks weathered from the elements. So I know that he would have spent a great deal of time um, there on the ocean. So now I've taken a partial image of a boat so I didn't see the whole image. I saw like the back end of a boat is what I saw. And from that, I got ocean. I got, um, he would have spent time on there. I feel this is a memory uh, of him on this boat that he would have spent time there. Um, and I do feel that this is a boat for pleasure, but I know that he would have fished off of this boat, uh, you know, hobby, not anything serious, not commercial, it doesn't feel commercial. Does anybody understand who this man is? Tori, Tony, got, I mean, I'm you sure got it? you've got my dad. <laughs> oh, your dad. Deborah, did yeah. you understand it? I did, except for the height. Okay. No, 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 I got go it all. Tony. Got it all, the sense of humor, the height, lived on his boat for long periods of time. Okay. All of it. There we go. And I'm, I'm getting confirmation that it's your, he, he's with you. So, um, so that's how you, that's how you draw, draw, draw that out. I can feel his love. He's still here. <laughs> I can feel his love. He's just like, I feel this energy of love just shooting out through the airways to you. I don't know if you, you can feel that. Yeah. Yes. Ugh. Yeah, I can feel that. What a lovely, he's a lovely man. Lovely, <clears throat> lovely man. And he yes. was handsome, correct? Very. Yes. Good. And not, not just in his younger years. He says no, no, no. all the no. way to the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He meant yeah. it. Real ladies, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the feeling. He's he's got that playfulness there, but yeah. Um. Anyway, I'm just saying thank you to him, but um, but does that make sense? <laughs> so you can do exercises of image plus three more. So image and three more pieces of information that go with that image. And that will start helping you to draw it out. And you can actually, um, he's blowing you kisses. <laughs> he's not leaving. <laughs> I can see this. Um, um, he's been messing with all the mediums like lately. drink as well. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> he's raising his glass. <laughs> um you can you can actually do an entire reading off of one image so we have to remember that with um um with um where was that going i just lost my train of thought because he's still here <laughs> maybe know. he has a message <laughs> that's probably when he's hanging around <laughs> he wants to say something he's always telling me to party no more. he's a flirt he's um he's um he was very social 
and he he <laughs> and he says Can it's all out. women <laughs> I was just going to say that. Women. It was all women in here, and that's why he's hanging out if he was a ladies' man, like Tony said. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's, he was fun, too. He was fun to yeah. be around and a um, lot of laughter um, whenever he was around. Um I'm, 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 I'm trying to tell him we're done now. <laughs> he's we're been, done. He, I think he's just discovered you know, how to communicate better because he's been coming through. He's a really good communicator, um, I think. Oh, good. Yeah, he's been yeah, coming no, through the circles a lot. Oh, yeah. to the, you know, to the the newbies, the learners, and um, they're getting him and, and he'll come through from one person to the next to the next. Just He's having fun with it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> totally lost where I was going before that. <laughs> totally lost. Well, I can't thank remember. You, Kay. I just I want to remember. say thank you. Um, can't remember where I was at. I I was I had said something about you can you can do the an, an entire reading off of one image. Mm -hmm if that image is loaded. So that was where I was heading. We have to remember that it takes a lot of energy for the spirit world to manifest an image to send to us. So when they, when they do that, they're going to load that image with as much information as they possibly can to give you. And then it's up to us to take that image and and unfold it and to see what's inside that image um, that, that's going to contribute to the story. So just so just know that for images. Yeah. Thank you. I was just checking, Deborah, just to see if I had a, another guy, your guy here, but I don't feel another another one here. But at first, I kind of thought maybe I was with you. That's why I was checking. Um, Asia. Uh, when you were saying that, um, do you, in your opinion, um, have you ever had the experience, uh, and also what I'd like to know your opinion, um, of, of when... Do you believe it's medium or psychic when if you if you get the same a similar or almost the same visual image from a communicator because what you just said about having it takes so much energy to manifest an image that once they've been able to get an image into your head if they came through again would they utilize the same image or would that end up being something psychic on my part as a medium in your opinion does that make sense my question so if um four months down the road if tony's dad came through again mm -hmm. he would have to regenerate whatever he wanted to if he wanted you know he it, he wouldn't if he wanted to bring the boat up again he may show me an image of a boat it may not be the same image mm -hmm. He may show me the image of the boat and hopefully I wouldn't give her the same Im same information. I would I would bring up a, a more specific memory, perhaps a memory that she shares with him on that boat. But he'd have to re you know generate the image. That but but do you think i mean in, i don't know would it be easier if you if they can come through certain con, certain mediums um because they're receptive mm -hmm. would it be easier for them to manifest a similar image because they've been successful at manifesting it or i mean how would i you know that's what i'm going is what yeah. how should i look at it if something like that happens to me as a medium because i actually had that experience where it felt like i was afterwards i realized wow that was very similar to a previous 
image wise of a previous reading that I gave almost and I felt like the with um, the same communicator yes with the same communicator and I felt that that it was in a different circumstance it wasn't just a one-on-one -on -one. it was like within a group and so um but it it was uh, so if if that happens, then what I would suggest you do, if you're getting a similar image, you've already brought them through and you got that before in a previous reading, I would blend soul to soul with that image. Blend with the image and see what new information I can gain from it. Yeah. Because I didn't remember any specifics, you know, because a lot of times we forget because it's not our message. So it kind of flies out of the head when we've delivered. Mm -hmm. But it almost felt like that that communicator was strongly reinforcing who they were. To be clear. But maybe that was just my conscious mind. <laughs> Could have been. Could because it was, it was after the fact it wasn't actually during the reading where i'm going hey i've gotten this information before but it was almost like a reflection of that there was some familiarity in the yeah. information i was conveying yeah yeah okay but it's gonna feel familiar anyway because you've brought that person be through before okay so you ah. you you may you know end that reading going that felt really familiar right well, it's going to feel familiar. You're, you're feeling the same energy again. Mm -hmm. And you may not recognize that energy in the beginning. You may not recognize it. It may be halfway through. It may be at the end where you're going, oh, I brought that person through before. That's why that feels so familiar there. If you've brought them through many, many times, you'll get to know that energy and you'll know it. Very I've got good. your mom here again. I got your right. dad here again. Okay, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Any any questions? I was I was gonna um, get you guys to do it, but now we're out of time. <laughs> any questions? Does that ha did that help, Suzanne? Yeah. So uh, my suggestion is set your intent, um, Deborah, and those that that. <sighs> work primarily with your clairsentience. I think one of the things that helped me move beyond it was the exercises that I did over and over, um, which is where I would have to, I would be asked to start with an image, <laughs> which would send me trembling, but I would still always set the intent, start with an image. And it didn't always happen. It, I didn't always get that image. I, I would do the, you know, get an image and then add three more bits to it. You know, all these, any kind of exercise where you purposely set your intent to get an image will help you to get there. You may not, you're not going to, in the beginning, you won't get an image every time, but it'll, it'll, it'll help you to, it's an, it's like exercise. You're exercising your clairvoyance when you do that. Same if you're very clairvoyant and you want to learn to start using your clairsentience, just do the opposite. Set your intent to feel. Any questions before we wrap it up? Or as we wrap it up. Yes. I, I don't have a question. I wanted, if I may, though, to share something that I learned in a trance class last night. Yes. It makes sense to me. And I haven't implemented it. But I think for many of us, um, the teaching isn't so clear as to how one blends we're told to do it and that we must do it in order to be um, adequate at being a, a medium. But what the suggestion was, once you know that you have your contact, visualize hugging them, bringing them close mm -hmm. to you. And I, for me, and again, maybe because um, it's a feeling thing, 
I, I just I just know it's gonna, help, it's gonna help me. I know it. So I just wanted to share for anyone to give it a go. Yeah. Or if you yeah. have and I, you know, I, I'm a very visual learner, so I would visualize their energy coming towards me and my energy going towards them. And then I'd visualize the two energies blending to one. That's how I used to always do it. Um, you know, another one, I, I like that hugging one though. That's, that's kind of cool. But you know, I was always told that when you're working with the spirit communicator, it's like you're think of that spirit communicator as a person because they are, they're just without the body. And so what do you do when you greet somebody, you introduce yourself, some people, if you, if you know them, you might hug them, you shake their hand, whatever it is that you do, you know, greet them as if they were, living in a body just greet them and and talk to them hi glad you're here i like to talk to mine afterwards to see if there's anything i can do differently to you know what could i have done to make that a little bit better um i don't talk to my guides about that maybe later the next day or something but right afterwards, like when we finish here, I'll have a little chat with, with Tony's dad. I'm just asking, you know, how how was that? I, for me, basically, I want to say thank you for stepping up to the plate and letting me, you know, because he was serving in a teaching kind of role. So conversation will be a little bit different. Thank you for, for coming in and... and and helping in in that kind of way but it's nothing long and drawn out two three minutes that's it send them on their way okay good um well it's good to it's really good to see new people here um i hope you guys come back hope i haven't scared you away hopefully next time we can do a little bit of practice I do want to start getting in more practice, if we can. Um, practice for you, not practice for me. <laughs> Although today was my practice. Um, I would like to start trying to work that in. I may, I may, I'm, I'm working on schedules right now. So I may stretch the time a little bit here so we can have more practice time. So, all right. All right, guys. Well, I hope to see you guys next week. Yeah, next week I'll be here. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kay. That was so good. Thank, Thank you. you. It's good to see you all. Thank you. Nice nice to Thank see you. you good to see welcome. everybody and meet everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, new guys or girls. Thank you. <laughs> welcome, everybody who's new. Girls, guys. I say guys too. I Welcome y'all. That's what I should be saying, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just, I just, I should just go Philly and say, "Yo, welcome." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you.